A new model from Stability AI shows the trend of getting LLMs small enough to run on mobile phones. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. One of the most anticipated evolutions of the artificial intelligence space is the move to be able to run large language models on mobile devices such as smartphones. Now, by and large, right now, models are too big to be able to run locally without serious performance degradation, but that hasn't stopped people speculating about local on-device type of LLMs being the future of the AI space. All year, we've had articles about this evolution in the LLM space. Back in July, The Information wrote about it in a piece called Small Devices Could Soon Handle Large Language Models. The specific prompt for that piece was an announcement from an AI startup called OctoML, but it articulated some of the benefits as well. They write, running large language models on the edge could alleviate some of the exorbitant cloud computing costs facing AI companies by taking advantage of computing power sitting idly on their customers' laptops and devices. That would also benefit cloud providers, which have to ration access to server hardware for their own internal teams. However, as they point out, historically, AI researchers have struggled to run sophisticated AI algorithms like LLMs on the edge since those models have to share computational resources and memory space with other important functions like well, actually being able to use your phone, and are usually more compute-hungry than the voice recognition or computer vision models already running on devices. Now, the piece also points out that Edge AI has other benefits, such as being able to run without an internet connection, which might be as banal a value proposition as being able to use it on an airplane without Wi-Fi, or as serious as having a medical device assistant during a high-risk surgery. They also discuss the benefits of latency. They write, in the case of Edge AI, processing data locally means there's no need to transmit data over the internet to a remote cloud server and back, speeding up the process. Finally, there is the benefit of privacy. Simply put, AI models work better when they have access to more customized information about the person using them, especially when you're dealing with cloud services that presents a risk, whereas if a model could run on device, users might have more confidence that their data wouldn't be leaving that device. Now, this seems to be part of the barrier that has held Apple back, for instance, from going deeper into the LLM and generative AI space. In an article a couple weeks ago about how Apple had increased its training spending to millions of dollars per day, the information once again pointed out this problem. Quote, questions linger over how Apple can incorporate LLMs into its products. The company's leaders prefer running software on devices, which improves privacy and performance, as opposed to on cloud servers. So far, that just hasn't been feasible. And yet there has been a lot of discussion lately that that may be a limited time challenge. In August, ZDNet wrote a piece called, Could you soon be running AI tasks right on your smartphone? MediaTek says yes. They write, Today the Taiwan-based semiconductor company announced that it is working with Meta to port the social giant's Llama 2 LLM in combination with the company's latest generation APUs and Neuropilot software development program to run generative AI tasks on devices without relying on external processing. Still, they point out that even Llama 2's small data set of 7 billion parameters represents a size of around 13 gigabytes, which, as they put it, is, quote, outside the practical capabilities of today's smartphones. And that's what made Stability AI's announcement a couple days ago all the more interesting. Jan Peleg tweets, Stability AI just casually dropped 3 billion parameters model, trained on 4 trillion tokens, outperforms most 7 billion models, and a 20 billion model. Now, very quickly, people started to put this in the context of this question of smartphones running LLMs. Daniel Samanez quote tweeted a mod Mostock announcing the new LM Alpha model and adding likely it can run on iPhones and Pixel phones. Indeed, a mod confirmed that in a later conversation. After AI content creator Igor Pogany wrote, can't wait until we can run LLMs like ChatGPT locally. We'll make many, including me, way more comfortable with putting sensitive info like finances and health data. Plus, you'd have your AI buddy with you even when phone service isn't, like on a long hiking trip or out at sea. So many potential use cases should be happening within a year, according to Ahmad Mustak of Stability AI. Well, Ahmad jumped into the comments and said that the new stable LM Alpha, quote, runs on a normal smartphone and we have much better coming. He also added in a separate tweet, only a short matter of time before an open 3B parameter model overtakes GPT 3.5, in my opinion. Then you can have swarms of them as experts as they run on your phone. Now, clearly this shows the direction that Stability AI is heading with this smaller, more performant model even as others are trying to think about how to soup up hardware capacity to run these models, others, like Stability apparently, are trying to shrink the model sufficiently that they can be used on today's phones to accomplish actual useful things. Now, of course, as I just intimated, people aren't approaching this just from the smallifying LLM side. They're also thinking about it from a hardware perspective. Dave Lee tweeted, I just successfully convinced ChatGPT that OpenAI should make their own LLM phone. An interesting question. 
Should OpenAI make a phone? In almost all cases, making a phone right now to compete against Android and Apple is akin to committing suicide. There's practically no chance of a new platform gaining much traction due to the dominance of the existing mega platforms of Android and iOS. However, the advent of GPT-4-level LLMs like ChatGPT presents a unique challenge and opportunity. Android and Apple will likely make their LLMs the default AI interface for their mobile devices, especially as LLMs take up more and more of the user time on mobile devices. Especially for Google, this is existential as they are dependent on search engine revenue, and as AI replaces much of search, it is imperative that Google equips Android devices with a Google LLM that is comparable to ChatGPT and GPT-4. Dave basically concludes that the only way for OpenAI to fight this tide is to release a new phone. He writes it could be centered around their LLM and be a completely new experience. They could give apps prioritize access to their APIs. It would be a new ecosystem and OS. Now, of course, Dave didn't just write this up. He asked GPT-4 if it agreed. ChatGPT came back with some pros, including full integration, a unique user experience, competitive advantage, data, and ecosystem control, but then cons, including that market saturation, how resource-intensive it is to design hardware, the risk of failure, the distracted focus. And then it goes on and on, with Dave continuing to try to argue to ChatGPT that it should focus on doing its own thing rather than just partnering, ultimately leading to ChatGPT to say, yes, OpenAI should consider making its own phone and operating system to fully realize the potential of its LLM technology in shaping the future of human-computer interaction. Now, of course, a lot of what we talked about was exactly this that OpenAI CEO Sam Altman and Apple's former famous designer Johnny Ive have been in conversations around building what they call the, quote, iPhone of artificial intelligence, although it appears from sources with information that the actual form factor of this device isn't clear, just that it's an AI native from the ground up reimagining of a personal computing device for the AI era. Now, importantly, this is more than a few idle conversations over dinners in San Francisco, as they've also been discussing a potential billion-dollar investment from SoftBank to get the venture started. And yet there are other efforts in this space as well that aren't strictly confined to just a phone. Another big announcement from last week was the Meta AI integrated Ray-Bans that were announced at Meta's Connect event. This is, of course, an inherently mobile use case for artificial intelligence, given that you're wearing these things as you're walking around. And the type of information you're going to be asking is things like, what am I seeing in front of me? How do I fix the problem of the appliance that I'm currently looking at, etc.? There are also startups that are coming after the AI hardware device space. Probably the most notable of those is Humane, which had that very well-received demo at TED earlier this year that involved, among other things, a live voice translation where the speaker who was presenting had a statement that was translated into another language in his own voice as folks watched. Now, the people at Humane are mostly ex-Apple folks, and Sam Altman has been one of their biggest funders, suggesting some amount of continuity to this excitement and interest in a different type of approach to AI hardware. Currently, Humane is scheduled to unveil more details in a couple of weeks. Interestingly, though, there is another argument that some are making that although it doesn't have all of the capacities of improved performance and privacy that would come with a truly edge AI that lived on device, that in many ways ChatGPT with vision represents a first step towards this AI phone world. Sunny Mukherjee tweeted, Microsoft missed an opportunity here because if Windows Phone was still around, they could have integrated ChatGPT into it. Apple has the phone in the OS, but no LLM yet. And Microsoft has the LLM, but no phone. ChatGPT can now see, hear, and speak. Now, at the end of last week, I shared some of the examples of how people who have early access to ChatGPT with Vision are using it. And the ability to take visual input from the world around you certainly does give off a sense of where things are headed and how an AI-native phone or device might be a game changer. The example that you've got on your screen right now is from McKay Wrigley, who took a picture of his team's whiteboarding session, fed it into GPT with Vision, and then had it write some actual working code. So summing up, it seems like there is a clear trajectory and trend to exploring the way that hardware, both existing modalities of hardware as well as new attempts and new form factors of hardware, can transform how people integrate artificial intelligence into their daily lives. And of course, as much as they haven't made a big move into this space yet, everyone continues to wait to see what Apple will do. As Robert Scoble pointed out in July, even if OpenAI introduced a phone tomorrow, how will the world switch? It won't. Apple knows this. It has the only store in many cities where people buy new things from. So all in all, it is going to be a very exciting time to see what exactly companies do in this AI hardware space. I think the only thing that is for sure is that we're going to see more, not less, attempts towards it. And I will, of course, keep you updated as we learn more. Thanks, as always, for listening or watching. And until next time, peace.